measurement sensitivity of an instrument we already know that the instrument we choose can make a difference in our measurement let's look at this idea in a little more detail now what instrument do you choose to measure mass of a substance a goldsmith uses a balance like this to measure the mass of gold and silver a vegetable seller uses a balance like this to measure the mass of vegetables you may be weighing yourself on a scale like this trucks with loaded goods are weighed on machines like this all these measure mass then what is the difference between them people buy gold in small amounts as it is very expensive so the scale has to be really sensitive a mistake of a few grams here and there is not okay that is what a sensitive scale means the scale has to measure correctly too that is what an accurate measurement means what about this balance it is used to measure spices like cardamom and cloves spices like cardamom and cloves are expensive too so those have to be weighed properly they are not as expensive as gold and silver so the weighing scale is not that sensitive but it is more sensitive than the scale that we use to weigh onions and potatoes the scale that we weigh ourselves on may be wrong by a few grams but the kilogram weight is accurate What about the scales on weigh bridges where trucks are weighed? Loaded trucks weigh many tons, so these scales have to be made for large quantities. So, what do you have to think of when you choose an instrument of measurement? What quantity you have to measure? Length, mass, time. temperature etc what do you have to think of when you choose an instrument of measurement how much of that quantity you have to measure milligrams grams kilos quintals tons etc how sensitive the instrument needs to be whether a little bit here and there is okay or not okay So you see that the instrument we choose depends on our needs and perfection in the measurement depends on the instrument In certain cases we cannot afford to have any error at all In certain cases a little bit of error does not make that much of a difference Now Here's something to think about. Sensitive instruments give us a more perfect reading. So, why aren't all our instruments sensitive? What do you think? Sensitive instruments have better sensors and machines. So, sensitive instruments cost more money too. We use them to measure expensive things. or where even a little bit here or there is just not okay sensitive instruments give us more perfect measurements we have to choose the instrument depending on what we have to measure the difference in the exact measurement and the approximate measurement is the error we have to decide how much error is all right and choose the instrument accordingly 
when you measure the distance between two towns the distance between mumbai and pune is about 120 kilometers it is okay if your answer is off by a kilometer or so it does not make that much of a difference when you are drawing the track of a race the track is about 200 meters it is not okay if your answer is off by even a few meters it makes a great big difference when a tailor is measuring you for a shirt the length of your sleeve is about 20 centimeters a few millimeters here and there really don't make much of a difference when you're designing machine parts that go into each other and fit even a 1 millimeter error is not okay the part will not fit and the machine will not work say whether it is okay or not okay the difference of a few milligrams when measuring the mass of gold no the difference of a few milligrams when measuring the mass of rice and dal okay the difference of a few millimeters when measuring the length of your pants okay the difference of a few centimeters when measuring the door of a cupboard not okay so you know that sometimes even the difference of a millimeter or less than that is not okay how do you measure things that are less than 1 mm long? With an instrument called vernier calipers. With vernier calipers, you can measure up to 1 tenth of a millimeter. You can put the object to be measured between the jaws of the vernier calipers and measure its length. What if you want to measure distances that are about 1 hundredth of a millimeter? You need a different instrument. You can use this instrument which is a screw gauge. The object to be measured is kept between the anvil and the spindle to measure its length. With a screw gauge, your measurement is even more accurate. There are other tricks which you can use to get more accurate readings too. What if you have to measure the thickness of a pencil and all you have is the ruler in your pencil box? What will you do? If you measure just the thickness of one pencil, your answer will be quite inaccurate. How can you measure it accurately? You can place about 10 pencils touching each other in a line, then measure the thickness of all 10 together. Divide the answer by 10. The answer will have less error now. Why has the error reduced? It is the same pencil and the same ruler. The same error of finding the thickness of one pencil is distributed over 10 pencils. The error of the thickness of each pencil is much lesser. What if you have to measure the thickness of a coin? And all you have is the ruler in your pencil box. What will you do? Make a stack of 10 coins and measure their thickness. Divide the answer by 10. The answer will have less error now. 1.6 centimeters divided by 10 is equal to 0 0.16 centimeters. Do you need to be so accurate in measuring time? If you have to measure the time it takes to reach school, a minute here or there wouldn't matter. When the bell rings at the end of the period, the pune just checks the time on the wall clock. A minute here or there doesn't matter so much. What about measuring time in a running race? The greatest runner of India, Milka Singh, was known as the Flying Sikh. Milka Singh lost the gold medal in the 1960 Olympics. Do you know how much he missed it by? One tenth of a second. You must have heard of the Indian athlete P.T. Usha too. 
P.T. Usha missed her medal at the 1984 Olympics. Do you know by how much she missed it? One hundredth of a second. So, in races, even a tenth and hundredth of a second is important. Records in races are set and missed by hundredth of a second. Many races use photo finishes to decide the winner. The difference between the first and second is really small, less than a tenth of a second. So, in these situations, the measurement of time has to be done very accurately. A clock or a watch can tell you the time up to a minute. Some watches can tell you the time up to a second. Some watches will keep track of time up to a tenth of a second. Some watches will keep track of time up to a hundredth of a second. We also have high-tech instruments that measure things without actually going there. Can you measure the temperature of the sun? No one has gone to the sun with a thermometer. So, how do we know the temperature of the sun? We have instruments which can measure the radiation of the sun, the color that it appears to be and accordingly measure the temperature. That thermometer is called a bolometer. Have you seen police with speed guns on the road? How do they measure the speed of cars that are going really fast? They have radars. We even use radars to measure the speed of athletes during races. You may have seen the speed of the ball shown immediately after it is bowled during a cricket match. How do they find out? Using radar. Some animals use this technique too. A bat sends out signals, sees how they bounce. From the way the sound bounces back, it can make out what's around it. What did we just learn? Accurate measurements depend on the instrument. The more sensitive an instrument is, the more accurate our measurement is.